Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're a subscriber, welcome back. It's great to have you. So today I want to talk about the reactive AI on the Roborock S6 Max V. So I've had this in my house for a little bit less than two weeks, which is a bit soon for me to really give an accurate review of such a new product. The overall dependability of reactive AI is, is, is pretty impressive. Is it perfect? No. So we'll talk a little bit about some of its shortcomings today. So uh, hang in there and uh, we'll get through some of my thoughts. I will be doing a more in-depth review of this Roborock S6 Max V in the future where I've had some time to spend with it and really understand through Roborock's updates uh, what they're doing to address some of the issues that are with it. Um, I don't think any of them are real deal breakers at this point, but there are a few drawbacks to uh, the reactive AI, uh, nothing really major. Um, I have noticed as I've tested it, so right now they're improving ro uh, object recognition on the Roborock reactive AI is um, able to see through a pair of stereo cameras in the very front of the robot. And with that and with IR, it helps see it see in the dark also. And I did notice that object recognition didn't really make a difference if it was dark in the house or if the lights were on. It didn't seem to recognize any worse or any better with either of those two. So that's great. Uh, the size of the object, it says it can recognize objects down to two centimeters by five centimeters in size. I did find that it did struggle. The smaller the object, it did struggle with. Um, it, uh, I'd say about, I'd say about eight times out of ten on the smaller objects it would recognize them and I'm talking about smaller objects that are not it's already a catalog of recognizable objects so it has a few objects that are already built into it that it is uh, it is able to recognize which is animal feces animal poop in your house if you have dogs or cats you know what I'm talking about it is a concern with a robot vacuum uh, it was one of my primary concerns with the robot vacuum uh, I can recognize shoes that could be slippers sandals shoes with shoelaces uh, it can recognize lamps, pedestal lamps, because uh, because banging into those with a robot um, pretty fast. In fact, I got a video right here. We'll take a look at it. How fast my S4 actually bangs into the lamp and actually moves it. So we'll take a look at that here. All right, as you can see, the S4 banged into the, that lamp pretty good. And if it was not uh, weighted very well, it could actually knock that lamp over. So it does recognize lamps and can avoid those. Uh, it, it recognizes power strips. Um, it does not recognize cords though. Um, so when it recognizes a power strip, that's a power strip attached to a power cord, it can, uh, for the most part, get around it. Now, depending on how the cord is laid around the power strip, if it's too far out from its recognizable area, it can still come in contact. In fact, I found the uh, S6 Max V struggled the most with power cords where it would recognize it a lot of the times and sometimes it wouldn't. I'd say about seven times out of ten it would recognize it as a power strip but even when it recognized it as a power strip it usually came in contact with it in some way or uh, shape or form or fashion. Um, so I got a little video clip here doing a comparison of the Roborock S6 Max V and how it navigates a power cord versus the S4 so we'll go ahead and look at that now. All right, as you can see, the S4 did a terrible job at navigating around that power cord and actually dragged it around quite a bit in my foyer. The S6 Max V still did a good job of avoiding that power strip. As it comes to poo, so, so I ordered some fake poo, animal poo from uh, Amazon, got that in and I've been testing with it. Um, and for the most part, it does really well. Uh, one area of struggle with the reactive AI right now is if, if the object's in the open area uh, where it has a good line of sight of it, it'll pick it up. But if the object is around a corner, up tight against a wall, or just around a corner in general, 
where the robot's getting ready to turn. In fact, I think I've got a video right now. Let's take a look at the video and I I'll show you what I'm talking about right here. All right, so as you can see there, most of the time, depending on the placement of the object, it may not see it quick enough and may not be able to avoid it. And I found that was right when it was coming around corners or in the corners of room, if it was in, on one of those walls where the robot is spinning around and it's faced with the object real close to it. So obviously I don't know the point of view of the cameras. Um, it did not recognize my bath scale, so I think that the Bath scales it has in the programming are the square type, the real low-lying square type. Here's a picture uh, right here of my bath scales, and uh, it did not recognize that at all. Uh, it just treated it as an object in the room. A lot of small objects that it doesn't recognize in its catalog as, as the ones I just talked about there, uh, it just recognizes them as unknown objects and it does its best to uh, avoid them. Uh, the takeaway, it does struggle a bit with smaller objects. The bigger the object, the better the navigation. Um, it does have trouble recognizing some objects some of the time. Uh, usually it's because of the placement of the object and where it's at. Keep in mind that it is not able to uh, recognize cords right now. So that is a problem that's a problem for me in my house is I have cords laying around and uh, it does not recognize those and it will plow over those. So it has to be a power strip with a cord attached to it, but not a big mess of cords for it to work correctly. Um, that is something that hopefully will come in a future update where it can better recognize cords and avoid those altogether. That has actually been one of my biggest problems. It's been an actual problem in my house is my robot vacuums get, uh, get caught up in cords. So I usually end up creating no-go zones and no-go lines. Now, since I've used the S6 Max V, I've run it in my house without any no-go zones and no-go lines just to see if it uh, got stuck anywhere. And it did a pretty good job. Under my bed where I have some stuff, the S S4 will go into the bed and kind of ram into it. This one sees the objects and avoids it, so I haven't even had to do that around the bed. So, so far, the ease of navigation has been pretty good. I really like this direction. I like where the robot vacuums are going with the uh, reactive AI, the front cameras, the Ecovax uh, uh, D-Bot T8 robot vacuum has just recently been released, and it also has front-facing cameras. In fact, I'll leave, leave a link to uh, Robot Masters uh, down in the description below and uh, to his channel. He's going to be releasing a video on the comparison between this and the T8. Uh, he's the only one I know at the moment that has uh, both of those uh, robot vacuums and he will be doing a head-to-head -head comparison of them for uh, navigation and pickup ability. So, you know, Roborock's always been um, uh, one of my favorite robot vacuums because of its uh, quality. The quality of the robot vacuum, the consistency, the navigation ability has always been top notch. The um, it's really a robot that you can just kind of set it and forget it and let it vacuum your house without much fuss. And I think that's really what people demand today. I think people need a robot vacuum that they can literally just push the button and have it clean up. Right now, I'm enjoying using it. It is fun. Uh, it is interesting to see it go around objects and avoid them. And uh, if you're wanting to buy this day one when it comes out pretty soon, if you're a pet owner or if you have a bunch of kids in your house, um, then those are reasons that I wouldn't hesitate to go ahead and get it. So day one, uh, if you're one of those people that have kids, things strung all over your house, or if you just want something that allows you to extend the life of your robot vacuum, keep in mind if it's not running into stuff, if it's not dragging stuff around the house like shoes, and pushing them around, that's gonna be better on the motor. So it is better for the robot vacuum to avoid these types of objects and not bang into them. Uh, my S4 has been banging objects since I've had it in the house and hasn't had any problems with it. 
but it does have to imagine that it avoiding these types of objects is better for the reliability of the robot vacuum for years to come. So uh, that's another n another plus that many people don't think about is the fact that yeah you can. Uh, hopefully extend the life of your robot vacuum because it's not slamming into everything in your house. It can actually see objects in. Uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I appreciate your time. Please subscribe for more upcoming videos. We'll be doing more tests with the Roborock S6 Max-V, and I'll be doing some head-to-heads with my S4. All right. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your time. Take it easy, everyone. Bye-bye.